Hi everyone, it's Crappy Kathy here with Stamp It Like It's Hot. And this month, the challenge is to do some ombre stamping. And I have watched a few videos and practiced more than I can even describe and, and haven't perfected this, but I'm gonna give it a shot. <laughs> In the, in the videos, they take a clear stamp on a stamp block and, and, and some have varying techniques. Some stamp with the lighter color first and then the darker colors. Others stamp with the darker and then overlay the lighter. Um, and, and in all cases, they get the stamp right in exactly the same place. <laughs> I can't do that. It might be because I'm old and have uh, bad eyesight, but um, so I, I, I got out my MISTI and I practiced with my MISTI. I don't even, I don't think I have the practice uh, piece around to show you. And it, it kind of looked right. So I'm going to go ahead and make the layout. I'm going to do it with my MISTI and we will, uh, we will see how it turns out. The stamp I'm using is the Squirrel from this uh, set by a visible image called Nuts About Squirrels. And there are a few other stamps on here that I may add into the thing I'll put on the stamping block. But the one that I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna try the um, ombre technique on is the big squirrel. So I'm gonna bring you down here and hope that you can see the misty. I have the misty set so it's going to open up like this, but I'll let you see kind of where I'm going to put the stamp and I have a um a cluster that's going to go over here on the page. So I'm stamping directly onto the white background paper that I'm going to use for the layout. <laughs> we'll see. If I will tell you now that if this doesn't work out, I will stamp off camera and I'll fussy cut the image out and lay it on top of the bad one here if this one turns out bad. And the colors I've chosen are pumice stone for the lightest color. Um, I've, I've got a vintage photo which is kind of a little bit redder color so I thought I'd do that at the bottom and then the walnut stain is kind of in between those. The pumice stone is grayish brown. This is a brownish gray. Oh, that's a brownish gray. This is a grayish brown. And this is a brownish, a uh, more warm reddish brown. So we're going to try it. I have no idea how this is going to work out. What I'm going to do is, well, let me, let me just kind of tell you, because I don't know that you're going to be able to see what I'm actually doing to the stamp because the stamp's going to be up here. Um, so I'm going to take the pumice stone and I'm going to put it on primarily the tail. Although I'll let a little of it go. So I'm really wetting it up. And I'm going to bring it down and then I'm going to really press down on it. I need um, maybe to refresh the, the sponge pad underneath because I'm not getting as good a contact as I would like. Okay, so there we have the grayish tail and I got a little of the ears and stuff right there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take the walnut stain and I'm gonna put it on I'm, I'm getting some on this um, foam applicator, and I'm going to put that directly on the stamp, kind of somewhat overlapping the, um, the tail. I'm going to bring that down and press it in. And we'll see. 
We'll see how that turns out. It's pale-ish, so what I'm gonna do, I don't like that. I'm gonna take this and kind of, let me see if I have a smaller ink pad of walnut stain. No, I don't have the browns in that. So I'm just gonna go with some direct application there and we'll see what that does. Just kind of trying to build up the image but show a gradation in color. Um, not necessarily from light to dark but from tone to tone. Okay, that's better but it kind of looks like the image kind of looks like it moved. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to now take the vintage photo and I'm going to go, I'm going to apply it to the bottom and maybe even a little up let's see how this works okay I'm not sure that's enough. Distinction in color. So I'm going to kind of bring it back down and press it in an area that I know didn't get enough color. And I'm going to take my... Um, foam applicator here and I'm going to add a little up here around the tail just at the the hairs and there's an area right up in the kind of the hindquarters there in the back that's not very um, well defined so wish me luck Well, folks, it is what it is, and I'm okay with it. It's clearly a squirrel, and there's a gradation in color. And I will tell you right now that the videos that I saw um, used a more solid, uh, one of them, um, Jennifer McGuire Inc., was showing it with a um, uh, stamp set of uh, Christmas ornaments and they were fairly solid with um, um, kind of a an open area that provided the design on the on the answers let me put the misty away and I'm afraid I have not shown you a very good example of a um, of that technique and I apologize for that I wish uh, <laughs> I wish it had turned out better, but it didn't. And I'm okay with what I have, but I had kind of hoped that we would discover a uh, kind of a new technique together. <laughs> I, I will say that it's, it's now got me um, kind of, determined to um, to try it and make it work. So I'm going to build the layout. Uh, for those of you who've been watching me for a while, you know that um, we used to call Ava Baby Squirrel, so I try to put a squirrel on all of her pages, and that's why I bought that stamp set was for Ava pages. So I'm building uh, this it's a um, I'm actually going to move this down on the page. 
because I want the squirrel lined up with the photo, uh, the photo. So I'll bring it down. I have that there. We'll do it that way. Okay, and I have some foam back here, and I'm I'm just going to embellish this very simply because I don't necessarily want to compete with the squirrel and I may add like I said some of those other stamps I think I'm gonna go here with this one this is a, a, a cut off of a pink fresh these are pink fresh papers I don't know where this came from It doesn't have a back. It didn't have a branding strip. What I'm going for here is kind of the coral color that's in her shirt. These are This is the original photo, and you can see it's kind of blurry. So I did one uh, filter in Prisma um, to get this, um, this look. I think it's called the Leva filter. And then this is a, an anime um, uh, AI, artificial intelligence effect um, that came from uh, the Fotor app on my phone, F-O-T-O-R. So I'm putting this little disc that says sweetheart and that's going to be my title i'm not going to get much fancier than that i have these film strips which i didn't use but which i could still kind of add There and here. That one will also work, but I want to put it kind of at the same angle as that one. Let me get a little bit of glue on here to stick it down. These are um, forty nine in market uh, film strips. I think that's from the um, Spectrum Gardenia collection that had a lot of black and gray accents. So now I have my hearts. <laughs> Whoops! That I'm going to cover the pink on that I don't guess I need to but I will put that there actually I'm gonna do it the other way around put that there and then the pink heart is gonna get overlaid on the blue. I didn't put enough glue to make contact. And I'm wearing my um, Astros shirt uh, because I made a video <laughs> earlier today, earlier this morning. It is still morning, yes. Um, and it was about the road trip we took in 2016 to baseball games and I wore it for that when I was I don't think that's gonna I don't think that looks good so I'm gonna take this heart and just kind of overlay it on the flowers 
I'll just put it up next to that one. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's a fiddly little heart. Okay, now my question is, do I want acorns or smaller um, or anything? Here is a, this is an acorn cluster that could go maybe in the corner. Or under here. You know what I think I'm going to do is, let me see if I have any of that same pattern paper. And I have to look in my waste bin here. Let's do a strip of pattern, this pattern paper, and let me get a strip of this one. Oh, let me cut it and then tear it. I'm going to cut it this way on the darker pink and then tear a small strip and see if I can overlay those. I'm going to do this one so that it has no sharp edge. And I'll do it this way. But I have to do this one so that there's no sharp edge there. I'm fussing and fidgeting with something that um, should be a little more automatic. Um, I hadn't I, I don't want the squirrel just out there on his own. Um, let me do the... Yeah, this is good. So I'm going to place it here. And then off camera, I'm going to type, um, I'm going to print a little tiny strip that says baby squirrel. And that will kind of give a, uh, some meaning to the squirrel. In the meantime, I apologize for not uh, having perfected the, um, ombre <laughs> technique and I apologize to Visible Image Stamps for not um, showcasing their stamp for the beautiful stamp that it is and now I'm going to add some splatters. I just want to mix the colors I used on the stamp and do splatters of and I'm not picking up enough of the okay so that's that color now I'm going to go with the pumice stone and get a little lighter color, a more subtle stamp, and it's a 
uh, actually have a an ombre look to the splatters. Okay, I think I'm done with this page and next month we're doing embossing and I should be marginally better at that. I think I join a lot of these um, hops and, and uh, series in order to learn how to do things and I've learned something today it's that perhaps ombre stamping is not necessarily in my future but you could try it out check out Jennifer, Jennifer McGuire Inc. and all of the other folks who are doing uh, pages for this series and I'll have their links in my uh, description box but here's my page I don't hate the page because it's about my baby squirrel Ava and it's just a cute succession of photos of her and I like the little squirrel kind of looking on so I will see you next time <laughs> bye